Onk Live Insights is a video editorial program produced by Onk Live. Another antibody that has shown clinical responses in the treatment of ALL is enotuzumab, targeting CD22. Enotuzumab is an antibody drug conjugate. Single-agent data was reported and published over the last couple of years, and there were quite some good response rates seen, um, up to 30 to 40 percent CR and um, incomplete CR remission rates in patients with ALL. At this year's ASH, there was a study presented adding enotuzumab to mini hyper -CVAT. In patients above the age of 60, so the older ALL patient population where we really need new therapies for. So essentially the dosages or most of the dosages of, of the antracycline and vincristine were cut in half by 50%, methotrexate and ARC was reduced, and enotuzumab was added. Most patients, 97% of the patients, achieved a complete remission. Importantly, most of those patients also achieved, or almost or every patient at who achieved a CR also achieved a MRD negativity, our, our gold or our hallmark for, for depths of response. At two years, the overall all survival rate was high in the, in, the, in the range of 70% and the relapse-free survival rate at 87%. I think those are quite good numbers for this patient population. Again, now learning to incorporate those new antibodies targeting CD19, CD20, or CD22 in our in our chemotherapeutic regimen, how to sequence, when to use it, um, develop new therapies at some point, possibly also combine, combining those drugs together. So I do think it's very exciting to see that we have now several antibodies or novel approaches targeting ALL-specific antigens that all yield good response and remission rates, can convert CR rates into MRD-negative states, and clearly help patients um, improve their outcome and clearly help us treat um, adult patients with ALL. What is the role of um, novel signaling pathways and, and target therapy in acute lymphoblastic leukemia? I think we learned a very good lesson, or we are learning a very good lesson from the BCA-able-like acute lymphoblastic leukemias, as I mentioned. Um, a few minutes ago, a lot of those BCA-like acute lymphoblastic leukemia cells have mutations in cytokine receptors or tyrosine kinases, which sort of opens up the field um, for treatment of targeted drugs um, that uh, address those abnormalities. I mentioned before the activity of the satinib or imatinib or oxalitinib or some other kinase inhibitors in ALL, which is something you would not traditionally think about as ALL always has been a very chemotherapy heavy disease. Um, there are also some data, preclinical data, uh, partly from the ASH meeting in 2015 that show that combinations of those um, targeted drugs, for instance, drugs targeting JAK2 pathway and mTOR pathway have activity in models of BCA-like acute lymphoblastic leukemia. If we extend the small molecule type inhibitors, you may also think about um, drugs that target MLL rearrangements, um, see the DOT1L inhibitors in, in clinical uh, trials currently. Even in sort of some T-cell subsites, another more newly described subtype, the early T-cell precursor acute lymphoblastic leukemia, regardless how it's defined now, um, seems to show um, responses to uh, targeted drugs addressing signaling pathways just such as JAK2 or combinations of JAK2 and BCL2 antagonists even. Um, so I think this is a rapidly expanding field and there are already clinical trials in progress are starting that combine JAK2 inhibitors, for instance, with chemotherapy. So it's a, it's a very interesting area. Um, another big area obviously is immunotherapy. That's not necessarily what you would refer to as small molecules, but, but it's a very um, interesting and active field. We talked about blinatumumab. I mentioned several times CAR T cell programs, but there's lots of activity in that area as well. It's a little bit harder in T cell acute lymphoblastic leukemia. Notch 1 was brought up. Um, it's rearranged uh, or mutated in about 50% um, of uh, patients with T cell acute lymphoblastic leukemia. Drugs have been developed and 
actually brought into clinical trials, the gamma secretase inhibitors, um, to try NOTCH1 as a target. It didn't work out very well in initial studies, partly because of the toxicity of gamma secretase inhibitors, partly because of the more moderate clinical activity, but, but there are also attempts in trying to combine those drugs and maybe even with other targeted molecules. So the area of small molecule inhibitors is, is really a uh, uh, treatment area in ALL I think we'll, we'll see much more of and, and that may become very important indeed. We're finally in a position where we can start talking about an improvement in survival for adults with ALL. I, I don't think I can speak more powerfully than that. The technologies, be they blinitumumab, be they onituzumab, be they CAR T-cells, we now have the opportunity to approach ALL in a way that's radically different, in a way that's less dependent on things like uh, you know, DNA damage response, uh, and, and ultimately s obtain better outcomes. I mean, what we're seeing with these novel compounds also allows us to decrease the intensity of therapy relative to high-dose chemo. If you look at where we've shown improvements in ALL and you focus on those patients over age 65, you'll, I don't think it, it, anyone would be surprised to say that this is a group of patients who've seen very, very little improvement over time. We can now arguably improve their outcomes. I was just talking to a, a colleague of mine from Emory who treated an 87-year-old with blinitumumab safely. This patient's in a remission from his leukemia. That's the take-home message. We now have therapeutic alternatives to high-dose chemotherapy.